so good afternoon guys uh, i hope you have you had your lunch and you're all ready for the next session um i'm shumantro i would be talking a little bit about toolbox and if you don't know what toolbox is i would give you a brief intro of why we have toolbox what's the use of it and preferably where we stand with the project at this point uh, me and debershi another guy we both are maintaining toolbox rpms and the images and i'll go ahead and start this presentation so couple of things about me uh, i am i'm shumantro i work for the fedora qa team and my primary job role is to test packages images as in the compose images and anything which comes new as a part of test days other than that i do few other things in fedora one of that is making sure that council understands or rather works with whatever new community stuff we want to roll out so objectives fedora ambassadors and few other things i also am somebody who coordinates outreach in fedora so if you have if you are willing to do internships in fedora that's one of the programs i coordinate uh, with covid that has not been a very successful one but yeah you know we we keep having more and more projects so if you are someone who is having um, you know who who wants to have projects initiatives or very small bite size tasks you want to accomplish um, reach out to me i coordinate internships as well with gsoc uh, as in google and outreachy so i would be able to help out i usually hang out on libera chat and couple of channels that's mentioned there and that's mostly what we have so let's get started first up um so a long time back when we started doing linux distros um everything was based out of a specific packaging format so you have the debs and the rpms and you would basically package everything in a deb rpm style the problem is everybody's machine becomes or starts becoming a snowflake problem which is if you have a machine and you are running fedora something um ubuntu something and you have your own package set or the packages you use it's very hard for me to debug what's happening in your machine so if something crashes it's nearly impossible unless you give me a full trace back of what has broken it becomes very hard for normal general users to provide us with that much amount of logs every time they file a bug hence most of the bugs that people file are marked as invalid and they do not contribute much to the much to us solving it in short so as a result it becomes very hard for us to test what these problems are how this problem started other things with when you have rpms and debs uh, mostly these are packages and updates are not really fault tolerant so if you ever try to upgrade your machine and your you run out of space or your power goes out or your battery fails well that's a that's a whole different issue after after that point right so historically we had exactly these problems and other problem is we had this we had almost no separation between the apps and the operating system itself which means um think about it this way if you wanted to have the latest version of firefox or latest version of dark tables on your machine you would probably have the latest version of operating system like if you were to expect fedora 30 nine to have x version of firefox running and even if that's until that's packaged for f38 specifically you cannot really really have it that becomes a little challenging because there is no separation between apps and you have to mig upgrade your entire production system just to support your apps and that's a that's a problem that has been there for a really long time one advancement that we had few years back was we started having these things called os tree now all of you who don't know what os tree is os tree is think of it like git but for your operating systems so when a package maintainer or whenever a maintainer commits something they actually package the entire thing under one hash and every time you upgrade you upgrade to that particular hash so if something is failing let's imagine uh, a particular hash that we all are sitting in and there is a very high chance if my firefox crashes your firefox will crash as well 
because we are sitting on one simple hash, and which means if, if I were to fix something and deliver you a fix, it is very easy for me to tell you, okay, that hash works, just upgrade it, and it would just solve your problem. That's a very simple way to detect problems and fix it, or rather try to find a root cause of it without going into what packages changed between um, you know, last two days before the failure started happening on your system and you could actually register. So that started happening with OS3, and OS3 used to maintain a lot of flat packs and Podman apps, so all the apps with OS3 were very sandboxed, so technically, since OS3 is immutable, all the things came as a part of either flat packs or Podman, so all the client applications were flat packs, all server applications were Podman apps, right? And then it used to make life easier for most of the people who used to use OS3, or at the still use OS3. The only problem with OS3 is there's no DNF, and there is no, uh, it's Im immutable, so you cannot really modify slash user. I mean, you can, you can do a lot of things, but that, that is not really how OS3 is meant to be used. Now, as a result, one of those things that we started talking about was how can we solve this? So like, for example, if you were a C++ developer, or you were a, a Golang developer, you still need binaries. And those binaries are not in flat packs anymore. They are still RPMs, and you would need to install those, those RPMs. But without DNF, that's not really possible. So the other way that you could go around was installing that onto a container, and then pulling that out from something. Problem is, when you use or keep using Podman for multiple things, you make your commands start getting like, one sentence on one paragraph longer. Like, because it sandboxes its own self. And other thing is, when you try to SSH between Podman and Podman and Podman, now that gives you another level problems. As a developer, when you start building apps, you really do not want such things. So the simple implementation that we came up was to ensure that all these um, compilers, debuggers, SDKs, um, you know, we're kind of set up using one single place. And you wouldn't have to spin up containers after containers after containers for doing the same. Um, example, uh, these were the few questions that a lot of people had. Uh, last one is actually <laughs> a hack that is layering works, but every time you layer, you restart. Every time you restart, well, you lose things. You, you really don't want to install NPM dependencies and keep restarting over and over. So, yes, moving on, we started having a new thing called Toolbox. And that was the point when we decided Toolbox would help developers run all of these things inside the Toolbox and use it system-wide however way you want to use it. That's the point when we started making Toolbox more developer or debugger friendly. So if you, are some, if you are someone who is debugging code and you do not have a particular system, like for example, I want to debug something for, or rather I want to build something for CentOS, but I'm running Fedora. Um, well, my original option is to run a VM. Here's the, here's the thing, or a container, anything for that matter. But every time I keep running Podman and keep giving it commands and more commands and more commands, that's a problem. Also, a lot of integrations with systemd, Avahi, network drivers, they need to be explicitly set up most of the time. Toolbox, you don't need to do that. That's implicitly done for you. It becomes, it increases the quality of life for a developer and that's exactly how. So as part of Toolbox, we kind of have all these images that we are talking about, um, hosted in registry.fp.o, right? Some images come from accessfredhat.com, um, specifically the rel nine images. So if you are somebody who is using a Fedora and you want to run um, rel for testing your code or building something, you know, you can have a rel image. If you are on CentOS, you can have a Fedora image. 
vice versa. Toolbox makes it really easy for you to go ahead, have a container, a bunch of containers running very specific things, and then you can go ahead and run like your graphical applications at, because it supports well and it can, you can run your graphical applications as well as your CLI applications, use it wherever you feel like. This is one of those things which we kind of started uh, talking about for a long time from a developer perspective, very precisely. But very recently we have also learned the fact that it becomes really hard when you are supposed to, one of my use cases back in the day was whenever I used to commit something for a repo, it used to, let's say that's a Ruby repo and I need a bunch of dependencies to run a lint. And I don't have 1.9 GB to give on my system for it to download things, and which I would probably never use after that point. In that case, I would probably have the entire thing run on a toolbox and then run whatever commit I want to have. That way, uh, it, it creates a very simple separation between things that I don't want, want it one time, and gone. And I, would st I can still, if I want, because it uses Podman on the back end, I can actually snapshot all of that, keep a tar of it, import it every time I want to use it and reuse it again with Toolbox, and that, would, that makes developer life easy. So a couple of things that we have decided with Toolbox, or rather, we kind of are trying to do with Toolbox. One thing is we are trying to go ahead and give you a very simple command line um, th debugger for OS3 and OS3-based distributions, namely IoT Core OS, um, GNOME Endless OS, and goes on. Uh, it is actually very important for adoption of these OS3 images, or rather OS3-based um, operating systems, because without DNF, a lot of the people who are actually working and developing apps they wouldn't get the libraries they would want. Without the proper support of DNF, it is going to make uh, adoption curve really hard for folks who are using OS3. Also, there is a major thing that a lo lot of our developers look forward to, which is when, whenever they run applications on, let's say, Toolbox, it is not actually, it is very seamless. It doesn't make your life revolve around multiple flags and parameters. I'll come to it how. So uh, other thing is we have grown our code base or rather the test code base, which is currently BATS, uh, which is which expands to bash automated testing, which is like 250 tests and it's growing mostly supports CentOS Stream 9, Fedora and, uh, Fedora and Fedora Rawhides and Ubuntu. Uh, Rawhide is the latest addition we have here because Toolbox used to just get images of Fedora for last like three releases now. But in the recent one, we have added it to the workstation by de facto, which means the RPM would still be shipped in the workstation, the image won't be, but the image that you can pull this time with Toolbox is the 39 image, which is the latest image, and that's exactly what um, a lot of people in Relenge are working. So Mikal is here, so thanks for helping us build that. All of this would also be um, moving to Quay.io in some time, so it would not be reg.fp.o like it is today. It would be moving out, and that's one of those primary goals we have with Toolbox. Now, that's, that's mostly what I wanted to cover up. Um, we are looking at four specific areas we want help from contributors, and that would be with test coverages. When I mean test coverage, this is exactly what I want to uh, point out. We have the basic. Uh, um, yeah, that's a fire alarm. Should we go out? Yeah.
Et euh... What? Yeah, I think I think we are not burning. I mean, we we, we are alive. We won't be burning. So. Uh, yeah, you know, we, we are looking at actually test coverages. A uh, couple of things on test coverages. We already have the basic test coverage running currently, which is fine, which is not extensive. It is just working and it is enough. But here's, as we go on increasing the number of platforms, which is Arch, and if we move beyond Arch, which is Kali and rest of the things, we do not have batch testing enabled for all those. And we would want contributors to come and help us over there. Other thing is as we go ahead, add more features to Toolbox, because it, because it, uses, it still uses Podman on the back end. We can actually do a lot of things with Toolbox, which are currently not being done, mostly because we want to enhance whatever is today, make it of a stable quality before moving on to giving multiple options that Podman can still expose for you, right? So, Essentially, we want to have those features, but for that we need contributors who can help us write test cases and manage those, both on the manual side of things and on the, um, the automated side of things. Open QA is one of a good place where we are trying to you know, dump most of these test cases, which would automatically run it for Rawhide because now it gates Rawhide, so it would be more easier for us to catch something which has changed, which then breaks uh, toolbox. Uh, that is one of the places. We are looking for anybody who is willing to go at their conference and talk about, because toolbox is a very small piece of software. If you have a conference around you and you want to speak about toolbox, get in touch with me or Rishi. We would help you with a slide deck which you can use to go ahead and talk about toolbox in your local developer communities. Uh, other thing is we have uh, a bunch of documentation, mostly upstream. Uh, we don't have things in Fedora docs yet, but if you're somebody who is willing to write documentation for us, reach out to me. Uh, I, I would be all game to help you write something. Uh, now, the last part, and this is where it gets a little tricky. Toolbox relies on a lot of dependencies. And when I mean a lot of dependencies, it means if something changes in system D, Podman, or rather whatever Podman depends on, it usually would break Toolbox. And Jens here has filed multiple bugs um, which has broken Toolbox previously. Some of these issues are easy to debug and some of them are not. And this is where we would probably want you to test toolbox with multiple OS environments. And let us know if something is breaking because that way we would be able to fix it in time. It, this is just me and Rishi working on it. So we, we still need more people to you know, come up help if things get broken. One more thing, toolbox is blocking, which means if toolbox is broken by some chance, Fedora workstation would be blocking it. We, in other words, we would block the Fedora release until that issue is solved, we, which brings us to the point of how critical this can be. So having said that, that's mostly what I wanted to cover at the state of toolbox, right? Um, and I would leave the rest of the time for the questions, so if you have any and every question that you have around toolbox, I'd be more than happy to take it. Yep. Uh, I'm just wondering how, how well are these test cases working for you? Are they giving any interesting results or? Uh, so the bash uh, automated testing, the bats, which is upstream, they give us some results and those results are usually in a very binary format which is either ones or zeros saying this particular parameter did not work at all 
or this worked. And all of this is done using Fedora CI, so which is, which is fine right now. But with the time, as we extend more and more features, I think we would want to rewrite some of these test cases, refactor them, and make sure something interesting comes up. But my concerns with the bugs are not coming from what test cases we have today. It, it is con coming from a concern of if something changes in, let's say, Podman, it is supposed to break us, right? And which intently means that before, uh, you know, before chain sets are filed, we, me and Rishi, will probably have to look through the entire chain set once and see whatever new is coming. And if that depends, or if that is, that have, has a possibility to break uh, toolbox in some other fashion. Like if there can be a regression on that. And, we don't have a blocking policy for it currently, but very soon with, with the fact that workstation would be blocking toolbox, we have to look at bugs well in advance, which might be coming from a new chain set which has not yet been deployed to Fedora, but when done, that will break toolbox for sure. Toolboxes that um, sometimes very long-lived toolboxes can have problems, and I think this is quite difficult to detect in CI. So I'm wondering if it would be useful to have some kind of archive of older toolboxes or something, or like to test on. Um, yeah, it's a slightly tricky problem, but. I uh, I couldn't get your question. Like, ah. well, the problem is that sometimes over time toolboxes stop working because yes. of changes. So you, and you can't detect that in CI easily. So yes. I'm saying to have some archive of older images to older container. Yes. Uh, to test these things. Yes. So that's actually a very very uh, nice observation. So the one CI that we run we explicitly put it to Fedora 34, and we test Fedora 34 and see if 34 works. And then on a 34, we test, let's say, the last N plus one, so the recent F37s and F38s, and CentOS 9s and RHEL 10s, or RHEL 9s, right? So in that way, we have one point of like understanding if, Toolbox works with F34. If F34 works, then everything else works. Uh, usually, if that test case fails, that's usually a, 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 a direct blocker for us. Like that's that's the that's one thing that is done by the CI right now. So if you if you were to look at, uh, I don't know if I can. Uh, let me show it. Yep. I don't know if this can be. So let me show you something. See that line? That's th that's the one that that got added very recently. But that that's how we are like making sure. So there's an older version of rel as well, just to ensure that you know, things are not broken. So we still have uh, rel base image 9.1, like UBI 9.1, but we, we still maintain, or rather test it on the CI. Thanks. All right, guys. Yep. Okay, my question is why Fedora 34 because it's no longer a supported. Yes, uh, 
that's, that's, that's actually, uh, 34 is not actually, uh, is very, it's not very static. We can make it anything, but we want something which is outside the supported variant tree, right? So that we know that this used to work. So if something has changed between that and the latest image, right, then we know exactly what changed. Remember the toolbox only comes with a very specific set of packages that are one-to-one -one compatible with the operating system that you use. So it probably won't have package binaries like uptime on it, but it would definitely have things like DNF, which are like what, whatever you would find, use libdnf, if that's dnf3, you'll find dnf3, if that's dnf4, dnf4, and dnf5, then dnf5. But it, that would be one-to-one -one compatible with whatever. But we just wanted to keep it 34, keep it outside the CDs that's supported right now to ensure that we can have an understanding. Plus, this was done when we did not have Rawhide. So this still doesn't talk about how we would test Rawhide stuff. So the moment Rawhide lands and we actually have something that is shown up on Quay, maybe we can add that as an image and see if it runs on Rawhide. So it would put base, pull base as Rawhide and then try deploying whatever we, we want to, yes. Thank you. Yep. So that's mostly what it is. If you guys have any questions, reach out to me. Thanks for attending my talk. <laughs>